So today I decided with it being a slow day, I would head to Via Lugano. And I'd asked the different people at the hotel what they knew about Via Lugano, uh, what I could do, what would be the best way to get there, etc. And they all actually tried to dissuade me about going. They were insinuating it's a dangerous place and there's nothing to do there and we wouldn't recommend you as a tourist go there, which wasn't going to dissuade me. So if you don't know, Villa Lugano is a place that my mum visited and met none other than the Pope at. And while I didn't know the specifics, I was there, so I was going. My mum met Pope Francis there when their paths crossed, when she was in Argentina and he was in Argentina. Now Pope Francis, as many people know, Pope Francis is the 266th Pope of the Catholic Church. Mum would always refer to him as El Obispo. I loved it when there was a news item on him and what he was doing because of the fact that she was able to say that she had met him, the Argentinian Pope, in Argentina when she was there too. And I looked at the history and it aligned when she was there. He was there, everything added up. And of course my mum was never a liar, so yeah. So I got a Cabify cab over to Villa Lugano had a nice conversation with the female driver and I di I'm distinguishing that she was a female because most Cabify cabs I got were driven by men apart from this one that took me to be a Lugano. The woman was very nice, you know, she was talking about and telling me all about the different areas of Buenos Aires and how she'd always lived there and how it was important and meaningful that I was going to visit there for mum. And it was great that mum had met him all those years back. Villa Lugano is a neighbourhood located in the southern part of Buenos Aires, and it's a part of the larger district of Comuna 8, or Comuna 8, which also includes Villa Riachuelo and Villa Soldati. It's about 12 kilometres southwest of the city centre. It was primarily an industrial area, home to factories and warehouses, but but apparently in recent years it's undergone quite a significant transformation. But it was largely empty, very quiet, the occasional motorbike speeding by, a very dusty feel, it felt kind of neglected. But I was there to try and feel some sort of a connection and explore the potential churches and areas where mum could have crossed paths with Pope Francis. So of course I just went to the churches and walked around. This is what Via Lugano looks like. It's slow but nice enough. Just trying to be in the same spot she was. I did get some interesting stairs. I don't know if I stuck out as a tourist but well what can be said. I walked past this housing complex which I thought had a lot of character to it. It was interesting, I thought some of these dilapidated paint jobs and doors were really engaging. Slightly crooked cross there. And the shadow of the barbed wire. The murals. And paintings. Statements of the signs. The rubbish on the roads. And walking down these roads while no one was around, there was a sense of insecurity. Police boxes with smashed windows. Always a good sign. And it was very spaced out. Again, very few people around. Apart from this dog, of course. But there's an example of one of the police kiosks. And the cars without wheels. But that's where Mum crossed paths with Pope Francis. And a cool cat. Dog's trying to cope with the heat, more sense than me. <laughs> I think he knew what he was doing. A 
Yeah, I'm just basically going from church to church to try and determine where she could have been. All the while seeing small towns are alike the world over. Or small cities. Well, it was a town. And what was interesting around this region, there were several instances where I was shocked because I was walking along and randomly from behind a closed door you'd hear these ravenous barks coming from a dog I couldn't see and a dog I couldn't identify. Definitely the bark was loud enough. But this is Villa Lugano. And that's the renowned Fantoche factory, which if you've been in Buenos Aires, you know, they make some pretty good sweets, pretty good biscuits, sort of mini type mini cakes. A lot of people like to throw their wine bottles on the ground in Rio Lugano. I did like the murals a lot and the training grounds. And the people relaxing. And of course underpasses always have a very cinematic feel to them. This is heading more towards the centre of town, which ultimately would be the point at which I'd turn around and uh, head back. Another church. La Moderna, a pastelleria. And the tattoo salon, train station there. Plus Unidad Nacional. And the Bull Supermarket. Esquinas y paseo del tango. The corners and tango steps. I had to get the escorces ice cream sandwich. Ah, uh, this heladeria. Apparently this is what a Scottish sandwich is like. Sorry, this is what a Scottish ice cream sandwich is like. And then after leaving Grido, it was time for me to get a reckless cab by cab driver to drive me home. Managed to get this really bad ensalada del bosque from Coto. And noticed the pigeons ravaging the rubbish. But random shoes. 
really cool bar I went to, and a random children's amusement train driving around the streets. I just thought it was really nice and cute for the kids on board. <laughs> Finlandia, um, that's a health food shop in Vancouver, as well as a cream cheese in Argentina. Monday Masa Madre. Café con leche and a croissant. All these things linked to my mum. Oh, and this was El Cuartito. Great slice of pizza. I'd forgotten about this being a day that I went and visited there. Hundreds of tourists came in after me. I just got the one slice and it was absolutely delicious. I know why the place was always busy. Unfortunately, that photo doesn't do it justice. But I tell you this, it was superb. Bit greasy, but you know, are we talking about grease or are we talking about how it tasted? It tasted amazing. A couple of guys pushing on a car to help it start. Parillada para dos. A variety of mate and a quiche that I got for dinner. And Viviana VIP. Yes, mum is.